Hey, and welcome to another episode of You Love Comics. This is a YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic calls, comic speculations, and stuff from my collection. So I did it again. I bought another small collection. And uh, there's some good stuff in here. There's a little bit of fluff, but there's a lot of uh, quality in here that definitely made it worth it. I'll tell you what I paid for everything in the end. It's like over 90 books in here. Some really unique, interesting things that I've never seen before. Uh, so we're just going to go right into that. But before we do, do me a favor, smash that like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm, sure that more people will see these videos. If you have any questions, what you see, you like what you saw, you have any questions or you want to correct me in any way, do me a favor, leave a comment and I'll respond to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, comic calls, comic speculations, comic book collections, you just love comic books in general, then you're at the right place because this show is called You Love Comic Books. And, uh... Now would be the best time to smash that subscribe button. Become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. All right, here we go. We'll start with More Than Meets the Eye, the Transformers, number six in the newsstand. Really, really nice condition. Nice, cool Shockwave versus Megatron cover. Some random Usagi Yojimbo, Wonder Road, number three. So I'm just going to go through these. I got these more organized later. This has like a lot of fluff in there. Uh, Spawn versus Batman. I don't know the artist of this one. This is the, uh, they had a team up or whatever last year. This is one of the variant covers. Fantastic Four, number one. This is the new, st uh, the new series that started up after the whole um, uh, Heroes Reborn debacle, whatever that was, that mess. And this is where they started up the series again. So that's pretty cool. It's in really nice condition. Thunderstrike, number one. I mean, sure. <laughs> This book for like two minutes was going for like, well, people were actually just interested in owning it because there was a set photo that leaked when they were making um, uh, Thor 4, uh, you know, Love and Thunder. And he was wearing this vest. It's like the Thunderstrike vest. And everyone was like, oh, my God. So <laughs> this is a different character. This is not Thor. Just remember that. X Factor number 85, Executioner song, not bagged or with its card, but whatever. X Men, Uncanny X Men, Thalnix, uh, 316. This is the new stand variant. That's pretty cool. All right, here's some eh, freaks number one. I don't know, whatever. Nightman number one. Okay, that's cool, I guess. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a TV show that uh, was in syndication back in the 90s. Sludge number one. Uh, the kind of a beaten copy of Uncanny X Men 287. Not a good copy of Venture Superman 535. A decent copy of Blaze number one. That's kind of cool. All right. Fantastic Four 500. This foil. It would be cool, but it looked like somebody dropped it. This one's fun. <laughs> Fury of Shield number one. This is, uh, I don't know if it shows, it's crazy foil cover. Uh... Just a weird Rob Liefeld knockoff. This era of Marvel where they made everybody, every artist have to draw hatch lines and everything. Um, but kind of cool. Happy to have that. X Nation 2099, number one. Early Umberto Ramos uh, comic. And you'll see something later on that's more current with them. But that's kind of cool. X Factor 106, Fallon X Covenant, Life Science. I guess that's cool. X Factor 100. So this guy was basically like selling his collection. He needed money to get a, to put towards a car or whatever. And he just had like a ton of books. And like I said, I'm going through the fluff. X-Men Omega. Uh, kind of cool. This is from the, this is the last issue of the uh, Age of Apocalypse storyline. The bag's kind of cloudy, but whatever. A regular copy of X Uncanny X-Men 316. This is kind of cool. I don't think I own this version of this. Uh, Uncanny X Men 360 introducing all these like new characters. I didn't know they they made like a cool foil cover version of this. So that that's cool. Uh, I don't know what this is. Critters number thirty and Critters number four. I never heard of it, but from from Fantagraphic Books. I definitely like this cover better than this cover. But then again, that. That dog does look pretty radical. And I grew up in the age of uh, Spuds McKenzie. So, I don't know. Maybe I should like that more. All right. This is interesting. Marvel's Book 4. This is that Alex Ross series. Like, early. I think it's Kurt Busiek wrote it. I'm pretty sure it was him. And this is a... Uh, but these are not the acetate cover versions. Um, I don't know 
what the deal is. I don't think the acetates were taken off. I tried looking it up, but this is the full series. Uh, yeah, let me show you. You know, I've only ever seen it with the acetate, but this doesn't have it. And I guess these were non-special edition versions. I just thought they were all made with the acetate. So I have to look that up and see what the deal is. So that's that's kind of cool, though. All right. Starting to get into a cool, little bit of cooler stuff here. Marvel Universe Deluxe Edition number 12, the official handbook. And number 14, with Wolverine hanging out with his buddy, Werewolf, Werewolf by Night. <laughs> Speaking of Heroes Reborn, Captain America number one, that Rob Liefeld. Uh, man, everything about this is awful. Like, look at this. It's like, isn't it an egg? <sighs> man, what a... Like, this was a bad idea. No historical context whatsoever. <laughs> this is cool. All right, here we go. First big book, Infinite Crisis number five. This is the first... Full appearance of the new Blue Beetle uh, with uh, him on the cover. This is the Jim Lee variant. This book probably has calmed down a bit. The Blue Beetle movie came out. People liked it. It didn't do well. No one saw it in the theater, but it got a good... Everyone that I heard saw it liked it a lot. And I, I saw it on HBO Max or Max, whatever they call it now, like, you know, when they released it. And I really... I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. It was like kind of like similar to like Ant-Man where you get like your legacy hero like you know Hank Pym was like an older man and you find out he was active in like the 80s and six, 70s and 60s and then Scott Lang takes over and that's kind of what they're alluding to this you didn't meet uh Court his name uh he was like missing or something whatever you should check it out I enjoyed it happy to get this all right here we go Amazing Spider-Man index number three five six Pretty random seven and eight. So that's kind of cool. Basically, these uh, each page has like, you know, it goes in order of the issues of the comics. So I had I, I have these, I think, when I was a kid. I'll have to look them up. But that's when I discovered all the weird covers from like the 70s. Like that one, I think it's issue 131 or whatever. The one where uh, Dr. Octopus marries like Aunt May. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> all right. Here we go. Amazing, this is like, I think these were like free comics that came with the Marvel Legends. So, there's this like first issue, and then I don't know what this is. This is like a new cover. So, I mean, whatever. What if Miles Morales number two is Wolverine, and then what if Miles Morales is Captain America? This is pretty cool. Spider-Man Special Edition number one. This was a uh, mail-in uh, that you, you mailed in to get this. And, uh, man, look at that mouth on Venom. It's so, it's like one of the craziest mouths. <laughs> That's nuts. It's like he, uh, what's his name? Jim Craig saw what Eric Larson did and went, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go even crazier. That's a cool cover, though. Uh, this is a cool cover, too. Marvel Age, number 114. Key snap into this book. Early preview appearance of Carnage and on the cover. I don't know if this predates 361. But I'll have to look that up. This is always fun. I, I seem to always get these when I buy these, like, collections and stuff. It's a great book. Ren and Stimpy Show, number six, starring Spider-Man. So it's cool to see Spider-Man drawn in that, like, Ren and Stimpy style. But the key significance of this book, it's Dan Slott's first written Spider-Man comic. And uh, say what you want about him. He, he wrote, I en really enjoyed his run of Spider-Man. Like, there were a couple of, like, eh, but most of them were not. He, like, I love the Spirit Spider-Man. He's the one who did, like, the Spider-Verse and all that. I don't know. So, this is fun. Okay. Spider-Man number 15. This is the, I think this is Eric Larson's first issue on the series, right, as Tom McFarlane left. Uh, here's Spider-Man 26, the holographic issue. This is kind of cool. Spider-Man 51. And uh, it's, you know, the foil cover, but let me show you the back. Here's another, uh, here's the, the flip cover to that. It's okay, it's got a big indentation, so this is definitely not near mint. That's the problem with these type of books. If they get damaged in any way, they show, and you can't fix them. All right, this is cool. 
Spider-Man number seven. Speaking of Humberto Ramos, this is the uh, variant that came out. So this is the first appearance of Spider-Boy. Now, this book was crazy for a while. And this is in really nice condition. This is definitely like uh, near mint plus it still goes for a bit. I don't know if people are buying it left and right anymore. It's probably calmed down a bit. Spider Boy has his like own series. I'm not. I picked up a couple here and there. I'm not really sure if they like revealed 100 percent what the deal with this character is. But I think it's a fun character. We'll see. I mean, I think every, all the everyone's going crazy over Spider Man Unlimited now. But this book was like crazy at the time. So happy to get this one. This is really cool. Marvel Tales at number 137. This book can go for a decent amount because this is like considered like, I, you know, there's reprints, but this is a reprint of Amazing Fantasies 15. And it also reprints the origin of Doctor Strange in there, as you can see on the bottom. This is like a nice mid-grade copy. Spectacular Spider-Man 200 with that. And this, I think, was the, at the time, was the death of uh, Harry Osborn, Green Goblin. Spectacular Spider-Man 189 with this hologram. Okay. Spectacular Spider-Man 129. 113. 100. This is a cool book with an awesome sp er, spot cover. Not spots for his parents, but this book did pick up a bit, especially with the whole uh, Across the Spider-Verse. These bags are a little dirty. Um, I tried replacing some of them, but yeah. This is a cool... Spider-Man holding black cat covers, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man 76, and then 75, and then issue 5. This one's like an okay condition. This one's in better condition. It has a little ding on the top here, but Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 2. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's get into Web of Spider-Man 100. Web of Spider-Man 70, that's a good book. Him, uh, Spider-Hulk, that's always a good one to get. This one is like, uh, you know, 25th anniversary border. I can't even see through the bags, not the greatest condition, but still pretty cool. So they made one for each of, you know, there's one for each Spider-Man title. There's a Peter Parker spectacular where it's like him in the half uh, black suit. And then there's... Um, What's the one? Oh, I think the black suit's face, Spider-Man also. That's uh, amazing. And then Webb has the cool, uh, this like spider logo, whatever. I was That's a really cool one. Web of Spider-Man number six. Web of Spider-Man number five in the new span. Really nice condition. This one's in excellent condition. Really happy to get this. Web of Spider-Man number one. An amazing cover from Charles Vess. Is that his name? It is Vess, right? Uh, such an awesome cover. I remember my brother getting this when I was a kid and just being like, whoa. And this was the... So basically what happened is they canceled Marvel Team Up and they gave Peter... They gave Spider-Man another title. Marvel Team Up was kind of a Spider-Man title. You know, he was pretty much in all of them, like majority of it, and he would team up with someone else. But this book, uh, besides being a new Spider-Man comic at the time, this is the key symptom of this book. This is the one where Peter Parker like rips off the Venom costume. It's that iconic scene at the church where he rips, you know, he finds, he knows that like Sonic uh, or whatever it is, sound weakens the Venom suit. Uh, Sonic, I don't know. They used it like Fantastic Four would use a weapon on it and it would make it weak and run away, or whatever. And this is the one where he rips the costume off, the symbiote sheds it. And as we know, eventually... You know, this is from 1984, so we don't get Venom, actual Venom, till like 1988. So, pretty cool, though. Great cover. So, happy to get that. Uh, this book picked up a bit a while ago. Decent condition copy. Amazing Spider-Man 365. First preview appearance of Spider-Man 2099. Speaking of preview appearance, Amazing Spider-Man 360. First cameo appearance of Carnage in a newsstand. And then I got two copies of Amazing Spider-Man 344. This is the first appearance of Cletus Cassidy, who will eventually become Carnage. This is cool. Uh, actually, this is out of order. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Amazing Spider-Man 309 in newsstand. Nice Mc, from the McFarlane run. Really nice condition copy of this book. Nothing too crazy, not really a key, but... 
any of those books from that Spider-Man run is great to have. Okay. Amazing Spider-Man 263. Uh, besides being this character, it's the first appearance of Normie Osborn, the baby, who eventually becomes like, I don't know, he goes on to become like Carnage Goblin or something. But this is a, this is a bit of a key, so that's pretty cool. This one's also a really good book. Amazing Spider-Man 259. Uh, I forgot the key significance of this one, but it's kind of funny. They're like, the original is back, you know? And it's like he was, uh, <laughs> you know, he just, he showed up in the black suit in 252. So it's whatever. But uh, yeah, great cover. There's like an Iron Man cover like this also. And I swear there's like other comics that have kind of emulated this style. But that's a great book. This is a good one too. Amazing Spider-Man 253 in a newsstand. This is the... Um, First appearance of the Rose. And I guess you could say, well, second issue of Amazing Spider-Man with the black suit symbiote. So that's pretty cool. This one's like an okay condition. Amazing Spider-Man 215. This one's not in good condition at all. Amazing Spider-Man 196. This one's in great condition. Amazing Spider-Man 180. And then that one I'm happy to get. This one I'm really happy to get it in really good condition as well. Amazing Spider-Man 172. First appearance of the Rocket Racer. I don't know what the key significance of this is, but this has like... I forgot the name. It's a different goblin at this time. I don't know if Harry Osborn's involved. But um, happy to get that. And of course, this is a great one. And then this was awesome. Now, I got, I'm not done yet. I got some awesome stuff to show you in the end but here's the last one of the spider-man or wait that's not true because i'm going to show you more spider-man <laughs> amazing spider-man number 63 12 cents goodness this is um i don't know mid 60s i guess mid late i'm not gonna open it up but it's in decent condition obviously it's got like you know the back is amazing. The interior pages look great. The cover, you know, I think it's a, it, I would say it's still like a fine condition book. Really happy to get that. Shocked to see that in this collection. So anytime I get pre, any Amazing Spider-Man pre-100, to me, that's always a treat. Obviously, it's been written on. I don't even know what the hell that is. That's not a signature. I don't know. Some kid doodle on it at one point. But at least it's not too bad. Uh, but anytime I can get my hands... Um, like I said, any pre-100 Amazing Spider-Man books, that's always good. That that's a that warms my heart. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys something really cool. So, hold on a sec. He also threw this in with the collection. These are, uh, like, these large Pokemon cards. And I, I don't really know enough about Pokemon. My son knows about them. But uh, let's let's just take a look at that real quick. So this is like the let's see it's from twenty twenty two. V Star. I don't know anything about these, but this one's really cool. V Union Rule. I don't know V Union. That's a really cool Mewtwo card. I know who Mewtwo is. That's pretty cool. That's a cool one right there. You can see, I don't know if you can see all these awesome effects on the camera. That's pretty cool. This little foil one of uh, Dark Sylveon. Another one. This one's actually really nice. Flareon. Another Flareon. Hey, why not? A, a two Vatbarion. Another one. Ooh, my favorite. Everyone's favorite. Pikachu. I always thought BB-8 in uh, Star Wars Force Awakens and the rest of the trilogy, they were really trying to make him like the Pikachu of Star Wars. Lusario, or I don't know how you say his name. This one, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Palkia, sure, whatever. Mirandi, Miradion, or whatever. And then another Pikachu. Unfortunately, this one got split here. Uh, I hope this isn't, like, the most expensive one. Oh, well. I'll have to look these up. Probably just give them to my son. The one up on his floor somewhere. <laughs> All right, back to the hole. So this was 
Star Wars Insider magazine for ish, from 2001. No, issue 201. What year is this from? Oh, 2021. Just a graffiti-style Boba Fett. I don't know. It was in the collection. That's cool, I guess. Last Ronin Lost Years, number one, cover A. So that's pretty cool. Last Ronin... Let's see. Such an odd size book, this decision they made, I, uh, IDW. Last Ronin, number one, Director's Cut. That's pretty cool. All right. Last Ronin, number two. Now, I, have, I haven't looked at these, and I know they made, like, I'm positive there's, like, tons of variants of every issue. Uh, Last Ronin, number three. I definitely want to read this. Uh, Last Ronin, number four. And then Last Ronin, number five. So that's pretty cool. That's the full series with this collection. I thought that was a good get with it. And, uh, you know, this book was gone for, like, crazy money, these books. And they were, like, uh, I don't know what this considered. I don't think this is considered the first print. I mean, it's the director's cut. I don't know. Did it come out the same time? And it was, like, away from the charge more? I don't know. Happy to have it either way. And it's crazy, too. And I'm going to tell you what I paid for everything in a, in a few. I just got a couple more things to show you. So, Okay. So the the reason why when I saw this collection on Facebook Marketplace, first pictures I saw, I was like, "What is this?" And so, El Asombroso Hombre Arana number four twelve. This is basically a, a I think this is the Spanish, but this might be from Mexico. This one I could be wrong. And this is this is like a spectacular Spider Man cover, like one twelve or something like that. This one's awesome. Spider Man regret uh Spider Man. Um this would be like issue 335 or something. These are from Spain. Uh right? Yeah. I think these are from Spain, this one. So that's pretty cool. And they're the sizes are interesting, you know? Like you look at you like a let me show like a standard comic size, you know. They're like wider. So it's kind of cool. The art looks a little different. This is awesome. Spider-Man El Hombre Arana. This is basically Amazing Spider-Man 303 with McFarlane art. Another one from the McFarlane run. Issue, this is like issue 312, even though it says number 211 of Spider-Man Inferno. Duende Verde contra Duende. Spider-Man El Hombre, Hombre Arana. Regresa El Hombre Lamado Mysterio. <laughs> if anybody's watching this, I apologize if I'm butchering the language. Uh, this is like, I don't know what issue, I forgot what issue this is, but that's an awesome uh, McFarlane, you know, Mysterio cover. I remember seeing this as a kid and being like, whoa, like some of those covers were like amazing. There's that other one, the um, lizard with the gnarly teeth and everything. Spider-Man Hombre Arana. This one's from that, uh, I forgot what the line, this is like issue 323 or something. And then this is awesome. This one's in really nice condition. Spider-Man, Umbre Arana. This is basically the 315. And this is the one, <laughs> it's funny, and no one counts it because he's just this head on there. But that is technically the first appearance of Venom on a comic cover, even though 316 gets all the, that is a sick cover though. But that's pretty cool. And then the last one, which is awesome, is uh, Spider-Man El Hombre Arana. This is based on 298, but what's interesting about, no, based on issue 299, actually, I take that back. Th this has like the 299 in it and like the first half of 300. So I'm just gonna open it up and show you. Like, it's funny, even like, you know, 300 is the big issue with Venom. They still consider they consider uh, Spider-Man 299 to be the first appearance of Venom because he shows up in full on that last page. So, and then, then I like the, in Spanish, ven Veneno, Venino, right? I think it would be Venino. So that's pretty cool. And that's like the first half of like issue 300. So, yeah, that's awesome. And that, when I saw those, I was like, I got to get this. This is super cool. And, you know, and seeing all the other random books, like I said, there's a bunch of some fluff in there. 
But I'll go ahead and tell you what I paid for this collection. There's like over 90 books in here. I paid 180 for it. So that basically is like $2 a book. Obviously, I would say there's a couple a handful of them in there that I would say I would definitely overpaid. But uh, I would say these, uh, I was looking these up. These can, these can command a pretty penny. The last Ronins, uh, even if they weren't, I mean, the fact that they were like $9 out the gate and this director's cut was $11 out the gate. That's a great find. You know, getting this for like $2 is like amazing. Literally, it says it's amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I, I, I think this was a good little collection. Like the guy who I got it from. It was all, you know, he was like over an hour away, but he was willing to like come to me and, and drop him off. And I was like, ah, uh, no, nah, I'll, I'll meet you like halfway. I felt guilty. I'm like, I'm not going to, that, that's a long drive. You're going to like spend all your money on gas. So, but it was cool that I didn't have to go all the way out there to get him either. So we met like halfway. So it was like, you know, half hour for both of us. So that was really cool, you know? So happy to get these. Definitely. Uh, I always like finding these type of collections. So what do you think? Do you think I did? Do you think 180 is a good price for all these books? I mean, I think they are, but you know what? That's what the comment section's for. You could sound off below. All right. Well, if you like these type of videos, do me a favor, smash that like button. If you have any questions what you saw in the video and want to leave a comment or correct me or whatever, leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. If you like these type of videos, you like comic calls, comic book speculations, comic book collections, you just love comic books in general, you are a comic fiend, you just love comics, that's why you're here, that's why you're watching this, and go ahead, if you haven't done already, smash that subscribe button, become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation, you're going to see a previous video here, you're going to see a previous video there, you're going to smash that subscribe button, I'll talk to you guys later, have a good one, bye bye.